Welcome to the Smart Dating Academy podcast. I'm Bella Gandhi, the founder of Smart Dating Academy and your host. I started Smart Dating Academy in 2009 because I had this crazy knack of giving people dating advice that actually worked, that I took. I've been married for almost 25 years, and now my company helps people to date smarter and to find love. This podcast is meant to bring more love into your life, no matter where you are and what you do. And we're here to bring more life into your love. This is the episode you've been waiting for. Who doesn't love a good love story? You know me. I love love. I love helping people. I love helping people find love. And today our guest is a teacher in Chicago. She's an author of an amazing book that will blow your mind. And she's a smart dater and she's found love against all odds. So I'm really excited to welcome my dear friend, Sylvia Fodi to the podcast today. Sylvia, thank you for being here. Hi, Bella. So happy to be here. So great to see you. So Sylvia, let's just dive right into you, your story, which is incredibly relatable and incredibly inspiring for people. Um, I'll, you know, I know you were married, you were divorced, you are from, and I'll give you a spoiler guys about what Sylvia's book is about. And you're going to like lose your teeth over this. Sylvia's family was Lithuanian royalty or considered Lithuanian royalty. And Sylvia's mom on her deathbed, her grandfather, or her grandfather was a world war II hero who fought against the communists. And mom says to Sylvia, make sure honey, that you capture your grandfather's history. There are streets named after this man. There are schools named after this man. So as Sylvia starts to do the work, she comes to a giant realization sort of horrifyingly that her grandfather wasn't who she thought he was. So Sylvia, do you want to tell us just a bit about that? And then we'll circle back to that at the end, because your story is so amazing and what you're doing is amazing. Thanks. Yeah, this was, you know, I grew up uh, in Market Park, South side of Chicago, very Lithuanian community. And I always heard wonderful stories about my grandfather, Jonas Nareka, who fought very bravely against the communists. And, you know, he died in a KGB prison. Um, he was in a Nazi concentration camp. Uh, so lots of things happened to him. Um, and anyway, my mom was always going to write this book on her father because uh, the Lithuanian community here asked her to do that. She died very early. She was only 60 years old. Oh, wow. And uh, in the year 2000. And I was 38 then, a uh, full-time journalist. And anyway, she realized she ran out of time and asked me to take over her project. And uh, it was a pretty insane deathbed promise. But when your mom asks you to do something like that under those circumstances, what other answer can you give? Except and, yes. Uh, except yes. A except giant yes. yes. So um, I said yes, and um, then I got really into this into the whole project. And very early on, within that first year, I came across evidence that he participated in the Holocaust in Lithuania, and in a rather large way. Um, so, you know, I mean, I I, I do hour long. Uh, talks on this, but, you know, I I ended up finding out he played a role in murdering 14,000 Jews in Lithuania. Um, And um, Lithuania has the highest number, highest percentage of Jews killed in all of Europe. So, uh, and I did not know this either before going into all this. So if you were Jewish, you had a 3% chance of surviving the Holocaust in Lithuania, you had a better chance in Germany and Austria, you know, homeland of Hitler, uh, than you did in Lithuania. So um, my story basically upended the whole narrative of Lithuania's role in the Holocaust, because uh, unfortunately, my grandfather wasn't the only one who enthusiastically participated 
in the murder of Jews. And so, you know, until my book came out, Lithuania's story was it was all the Nazis. They did it. But um, my book is pushing back against that narrative and saying that, no, uh, they couldn't have done it without the Lithuanians. So that's kind of the gist of it. Oh my gosh. I have goosebumps, Sylvia. What a, what an incredible discovery and how the choice you made to boldly tell the story and at your own risk, at your family's own risk to set the truth free and to tell people what actually happened. I have goosebumps. I know the first time you told me the story, I literally, I couldn't believe it. And, and, you know, you're an amazing, you're a hero for doing what you're doing for so many people. And I know that you've undergone a lot of threats, a lot of, a lot of backlash sometimes from your own people. Yeah, that's true. Uh, lots of Lithuanians still are in denial over the role of their ancestors and the role of the Holocaust. And I get it because it took me 10 years to get over the denial. It took me 20 years to write the book. And 10 of those years was that psychological work of just um, accepting the ugly truth. And uh, many Lithuanians are still stuck in that denial stage here and uh, in Lithuania. So, Wow. And and speaking of Lithuanians, let's tra- let's let's kind of come to you and your life and your marriage. Tell us just kind of tell us how you, what your story is and then how you, and how you found love. Well, my ex, uh, you talking about the, the, well, I, uh, was married for 35 years. Um, I met him in Argentina. I was a journalist working there. And we did fall in love. Uh, He wasn't Lithuanian. And um, anyway, uh, came back to Chicago, had our life. I'm going to skip a lot of parts. That's Uh, fine. (laughs) You you tell the story in any way you want. But, uh, well, this is, you know, I mean, the saddest part of the whole story is, you know, we have two, we had two children. The oldest, um, her name was Alessandra. And, uh, She met a boy who lives three blocks away and he introduced her to heroin. And um, apparently the heroin was horrible and she got hooked in three after three times with it. This is also a whole other story. But anyway, um, she died of an overdose in 2015. And she was uh, 21 years old and, of course, uh, devastating to the whole family. Um, And my ex and I really couldn't recover from it, it seemed. And that's basically the main reason why our uh, marriage dissolved. I mean, there were other things, but that was the overriding thing. So, um, you know, he asked for the divorce. Uh, May 2019, and I did not see it coming. Oh, wow. I, I so you were blindsided. I was completely blindsided. I just did not see it coming. I was uh, devastated. You know, I mean, as bad as what we went through with our daughter, I thought at least the marriage would survive, but it didn't. Um, and... Um, I don't know where to take this. Uh, I guess, you know, it took two years for the divorce to get finalized. Uh, COVID was in between all that, so that slowed things down. We didn't, I mean, as far as divorces went, it was a general divorce. We parted Parted amicably. We didn't fight about anything. The finances we figured out. Uh, And I understand that that's unusual. Um, So in that sense, at least it was gentle. You know, the whole emotional part of breaking up was terrible, but the but the the legal financial part was rather gentle. So uh, it became finalized last May. So it's going to be a year now in May. So May and, 2021. Yeah, May 21, 2021. And I had already uh, been hearing about you by then because 
after, uh, I know about six months after he asked for the divorce and I, it really sunk in, you know, I had gone through all my denial that this is really going to happen. I begged him to change his mind. He didn't. Um, then it really sunk in that this is going to be the end. And I'm like, I think at the time I was, uh, 59 turning 60. And I'm like, I have to start over at the yeah. age of 60. Are you kidding me? After 35 years? I mean, are you kidding me? So of course I freaked out and, um, you know, I started, I'm, you know, my background's journalism. Now I'm a high school English teacher. I'm a really big reader. So I bought every single book on dating that is out there. And I read like 20, I don't know, at least 20 of them. And that, that's what I do when I freak out. I just read and figure out, <laughs> things, try to figure out things. And then I came across you, um, your IG lives. And um, I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And then, you know, we have a mutual friend, Jill, who uh, I also talked to about uh, with you, about you to her. And, you know, she highly recommended you, but I'd already been impressed with you by then um, anyway. And I thought, I can't do this by myself. There's no way I can start over. And then to add all this, you know, my book had come out and I, my high school uh, proviso math and science academy gave me a sabbatical for a whole year, which is unusual in high school level, but I got a sabbatical for the whole year to promote my book. And I thought this is a good year to, like I have the time, you know, yeah. to start something. Cause, cause I don't know, you know, starting a relationship is really something. And um, I thought if I'm ever gonna, cause if I'm gonna do it, this would be a good year to meet someone and, you know, get things going. Uh, so I was trying to be very logical in this crazy emotional time. And, and I thought, all right, once I signed on with you, I thought I still, I still wanted to be um, divorced for six months. Like I don't want to be separated, you know, looking for some, cause I was very serious about really finding someone long-term. <laughs> I mean, I'm 60. I'm not going to like do the bar scene and all that. You're and... gorgeous, 60. Nobody <laughs> would ever guess you were 60, Sylvia. Still, it's still, you know, I, I would st like, I can't, you can't lie about it. You're like, you have to, and I, I wouldn't lie about it anyway, but um, so um, I guess that's the setup. I, I signed down with you and maybe we can start from there. You, I remember it was last summer, you were fresh out of your divorce because now we're doing this and it's about May, 2022. And you did one of our love lab workshops. And, you know, I remember seeing this beautiful woman who said, I'm a com, we have a common friend, Jill Sharon Murphy. And for you, dear listener, you probably heard, you've seen Jill on my Instagram live show, or I've had Jill on this podcast talking about the let goables to find your own big wild love. So as soon as I knew, I saw Sylvia at the Love Lab workshop and I knew if she's friends with Jill, we're definitely going to help you find love. And so you took the plunge early, probably mid last summer, right? And said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work with you for six months. And do you think this will work for me? And I said, well, of course it's going to work for you, right? Of course it's going to work. And the first step, right, was we had to get prepared for your photo shoot. So tell us a little bit about that. And you worked with Eileen Collins from my team, who's an amazing coach and is a dear friend of yours now as well. Yeah, that photo shoot was a big trip. I mean, um, you know, I had to get uh, clothes, you know, for, for the photo shoot. And I'm digging things out of my closet and I'm putting them on and I'm showing Eileen like in a Zoom like this. She's like, no, in her Eileen way. Like, I think we could do something different, don't you think? So, you know, I had like blacks and grays and browns and boxies, uh, you know, boxy things like covering me up completely. And uh, I think you were on a couple of them too. You're I like, don't you have anything a little bit more form fitting? No. So um, I did. I finally started putting on the more form fitting thing. You introduced me to Spanx. 
oh my God, every woman's dearest friend is a good pair of Spanx. Or by the way, I have friends that will wear two and three pairs of Spanx, one on top of the other. So just saying this has been a discovery this year, like, oh my God, more than one, like one is painful enough, right? Yeah. Two and three. Oh my gosh. Oh but my god! If, uh, if you're desperate, maybe for a book thing, I'll have to put on three. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny! And your photos were so beautiful. And maybe what we'll do as well, with your permission, we'll give you a little page on our site, and we'll put some of your photos on there to show you guys. It this you need somebody who's going to speak truth to you, like Sylvia is saying, and saying, you're beautiful, you're hiding, right? You're hiding. And sometimes we're hiding what we think our age is, or we're hiding, oh my gosh, I'm not as fit as I want to be. And we wear these things that hide our beauty. And so I'm here to tell you with Sylvia as living proof, do not hide yourself. You are beautiful as you are and have someone objective. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a coach. Call me to tell you, nah, girl, you got to pop that berry lip. Let's foof the hair a little bit. Let's get you in that. Let's get you that red dress moment, whatever that is, where you feel like Cinderella. And then you become beautiful from the outside in and you carry that magic with you, which is what you did at your photo shoot, which was step one in attracting the boys to you. So let's go there. How was dating? Well, um, we started November 3rd and, um, She's got I got the date a really down, good response. November third. Yeah, I got a really good response. I mean, a lot of people were responding, and I was messaging back. And um, you know, uh, Rudy, uh, the one I'm I'm with now, um, messaged me almost right away, like 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 a weekend maybe, and we started messaging a lot to each other. Um, he was talking, he asked about my book. And so we talked a lot about my book. And of course that already was winning my heart. And, um, and then we were talking more literary things like about Hemingway. And we, we talked about, you know, we were messaging that. And then anyway, Eileen, uh, you, uh, has a session with me every two weeks to kind of talk about how things are going. And she actually went, goes on match with me. Like I have to give her my password and she goes on there and I'm a little freaking out over this. And she's like looking at everything and then kind of giving me feedback on, on what's going on. And then she's, you know, she finally gets to Rudy and she's like, who's this? And I explain, and she's like, you guys are just messaging all the time. I'm like, yeah, well, you got to get this going. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you can't be pen pals forever. I I'm love like, what? that. And, and I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to start things, you know, just, just ask if he can go on video. I'm the one who have to ask. Yeah. Yes. So she goes in there and she actually types it in for me with my permission. I'm like, she like types it in. She's like, can I press send? I'm like, go ahead. Go and... Eileen. <laughs> go Eileen. This is what we do. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in there. We're in the weeds, looking at your profiles, sending those messages with your permission. And then she hits send and there's no recovering from that. <laughs> yeah. I, I did not have the guts to do it. So she kind of did it for me and he responded right away and said, yes. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, um, so, so that's how it started. That's how it started. And, um, we, we had a first date Tell us about and, the first date. Everybody wants to know now that he's been a fan of your book. You guys, you're an English teacher. He's winning your heart with Hemingway. What was that first date like? It was nice. It was a lunch uh, at a restaurant in uh, Oak Brook Mall. We decided it was kind of halfway between the two of us. And, you know, we're all masked up still. And um, he walks in with a little, uh, a single rose. Oh. And I'm like, Mm, that's <laughs> like the bachelor, <laughs> like the bat. Yeah. Just like that. So anyway, we, um, hit it off. We had a lot to talk about, but you know, you have this, uh, idea of the funnel and dating a lot of people at the same time. Uh -huh. and, uh -huh. uh, 
I guess I and you know in all our conversations I was already prepped with what I want in a man so I already like and he asked like first date yes what do you want in a man and, I, and I'm like okay wow. this is kind of it is a little bit of, of an interview and um so I told him exactly what I want you know uh Catholic um you know, financially secure, fun. You know, I had a list of things. Kind, supportive, a cheerleader, all of your elevator qualities. Yeah. And, and I even said, um, you know, I'm looking for a long-term relationship, eventually marriage in a Catholic church. You know, I'm starting my annulment and this is what I want. And I could tell he was like a little, um, <laughs> taken aback you know he's like oh and I'm like okay well he asked I said you know and I'm like okay well we'll see what happens he asked me out again and then uh the second date he already declared himself like he wanted to like go exclusive and you know he said a lot of nice things and this was already a dinner date and we're already like drinking a little and, um, and I'm like, because of all my training with you, I'm like, oh no, we can't go exclusive. It's only the second day. Do y'all hear that? Say it for the people in the back. We can't go exclusive. It's only the second date. And Sylvia, can you say in what he does for work in general? Cause I find it very interesting. Yeah. Or you well, cannot. He's a former federal agent. Wow. Look at that. So he's done his due diligence. He knows what he wants. He strolls in. He says, all right, Sylvia, I got this. I want to be exclusive. And Sylvia is trained and says. I have to wait. You know, I just started. I think the second date is too soon. You're going to have to be patient with me. And then I said, you know, I'm not going to get intimate with anyone until 15 dates. <laughs> Sylvia, okay, for those of you who have not worked with us, okay, we have graphs, we have processes. Sylvia is like telling you, this is what we say, like no sex until the 15th date, right? Because there's no substitute in the dating process for time. And when we have sex too early, we're emitting oxytocin, which is the attachment hormone, which clouds our vision, which makes us ignore red flags. So I'm so proud of you for putting that out there on the second date saying, okay, this ain't going there until 15 dates, dude. Yeah. And I, and you know, all the books I read also recommend that. So it's, so it's not just you out of the blue, like, like this is like backed by a lot of research and a lot of men even say that they respect the woman for this. Um, so <clears throat> anyway, I'm like, Again, and I liked it because I thought, okay, well, this will be a good test and we'll see. And I'll see how he reacts to this. And I was also assuring him that, yes, I'm going to continue dating, but I'm not going to like be it. like in that sense, it relieved him that I wasn't going to be sleeping with other guys, I think, uh, while I'm dating until I make up my mind. And how did so he I react? Thought, how did he react to this bombshell? He was taken aback, I, you know. <laughs> Because of his profession, and you know, he's a very good looking man. He's used to women going after him, you know, and kind of jumping him. And and I'm like, not. <laughs> and right. I mean, I was interested, but I wasn't going to do that. I mean, I couldn't even like ask him to get on video with me without your help. So. <laughs> You're like, I am not going to, I'm not doing any of this. So that's so, that's awesome. So, all right. So he's good. He's in the game. He's not, he didn't walk out. He didn't push his chair up and he just said, okay, I'll wait. Yeah. And I, you know, before I started all this, like I was telling my girlfriends kind of my philosophy and what I'm thinking and I'm saying, you know, they're telling me I'm supposed to wait 15 dates. And all my girlfriends are like, 15 dates? Are you kidding me? No, there's no way no man's going to wait 15 dates. Two or three, three, three tops. That's all. That's all. But 15, no way. you're crazy. And I'm like, I don't know. That's what all the experts are saying. I haven't done this in 37 years. You know, I think I'm going to see what happens. 
I'm like, no, you're, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. <laughs> and, and so, so... <laughs> so anyway, um, he asked me out for the third date and, uh, we went, it was like December now. And we went to see the, uh, Christmas trees at the museum of science and industry, which was really a cute date. How it was a lot that? of walking and a lot of talking and we're getting to know each other and we have coffee and we're talking some more. And, um, I guess, um, and then he asked me, you know, then he asked for the fourth day we saw Messiah. Uh, I, he's picking some really good things. Oh my gosh. Uh, he's planning these dates and you guys, she has uh, leveled her truth already. I want to get married. I want to get married in a Catholic church. I'm not going to sleep with you for 15 dates. And this man is now planning the fourth date at the Messiah. So what happens there at Orchestra Hall? Well, we're walking. We went to Berg, Berghoff's for uh, dinner and then we're walking and he holds my hand. The this is like the first time he's touching me and he's holding my hand and I'm like, to me, you know, for a woman, to, for a man to hold her, I think it's a big deal. Oh, yeah. It's super and intimate. I'm like, I'm like already like seeing what this is like. And he's wearing a glove. Like, <laughs> like what? And, um, and I wasn't. And, and he like barely like held my hand. Like it was like really like, like my grand, like I told him later, like you held my hand the way my grandmother would hold my hand. And like very I'm dainty. Very dainty. And I didn't, I, it wasn't strong enough. And I'm like, afterwards, like this was bothering me. Like I was kind of like m making a big mountain out of a molehill over how, <clears throat> how weakly uh, he held my hand. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to get into this man, uh, if this is how he's going to hold my hand. And then he asked me out to go on out, out on a Thursday, the next Thursday. And I already canceled because I'm like worried, you know, about this hand holding technique. <laughs> <laughs> enter eileen collins what does yeah. eileen say to you you're canceling the date because you thought he was a dainty hand holder this former federal agent okay suspend all disbelief here ladies and gentlemen <laughs> so she's like you should give him an chance. <laughs> and i mean i was going to i just i was about to go <clears throat> on a, on a two-week trip to florida to visit a friend who'd been asked me to visit her for five years and i always said no and now that i'm available and it's sabbatical and <clears throat> all that so i went to florida and was there for a couple weeks and i was texting with rudy and i'm thinking about it and thinking about it and finally i'm like let's plan the next you know can you plan the next date and then comes the fifth date when I'm back from Florida. And this was kind of the, where everything turned for me finally. Mm. And uh, it was a really cute date. It was uh, a cooking date where you're like cooking your dinner. Um, it was in Glen Ellen. And um, it was a lot of fun. And then afterwards we went to a bar and I just told him, I said, Rudy, I really like you, but... Um, I'm worried about how you're holding my hands. <laughs> and you laid it out there. You're a dainty hand holder, Rudy. And I'm a little, I'm a little flummoxed with this right now. And I said, I'm like, how could you have been a federal agent, you know, uh, against criminals? You hold my hand like my grandmother. So anyway, he was laughing and, um, and then he, he held my hand and, and then he's like squeezing harder. And, and he's like this, I'm like harder, like this, no harder, like this. I'm like, yeah, now that's good. <laughs> he's like, I wasn't, he said he was kind of scared and intimidated by me. And that's why. Oh, so, so he was being respectful. Hand holding. <laughs> he was being respectful because you came in and said, listen, you know, not all of our clients do this, but Sylvia is very bold and brave as we know. And she puts it out there, right? She put her family history out there. She put it out there on the date about the 15 dates. So he was 
a little scared of scaring her off and being too forward. So he did the dainty handhold. And then when she's like, yeah, no, that's freaking me out a little bit. He didn't freak out and say, listen, you're bipolar or whatever. Like today you say this yesterday, it's 15 dates. What do you want me to do? Instead? He's like, how would you like me to do it? And then what happens? Well, and then he said, you know, uh, I said, I think I said, we, somehow the 15 date thing came up and he's like, you know, I'll wait forever. I don't care how long it takes. I'll wait forever. Oh, and he's like, goosebumps. Oh, and then, and goosebumps. then he's like, it's 15 months, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, no, 15 dates. I'm not waiting 15 months. But do you hear that? A man that wants to be with you will move mountains to be with you. He will wait for you. An alpha high voltage male, when he sees what he wants, he will play the game by your rules as well. So you said 15 dates. This man was ready to wait 15 months. I know I burst out laughing. I'm like, no, it's just 15 dates. Oh <laughs> my God. Like two or three months. Oh my gosh. And then what happened on the sixth date? On the sixth date? Oh, we're like, oh, so wait, I had, you know, I was taking notes and now I can't remember. Uh, I can tell so you it has to do with the dozen roses. Yes. He brought a dozen roses. I got yeah. a dozen roses and I, I was floored. Um, and then after that, I canceled all other dates. After that, I was becoming exclusive, even though uh, you know, we weren't, cause it wasn't 15 dates yet. <laughs> right. We weren't sleeping together. So we let, we let Eileen was very adeptly handling the Sylvia Rudy situation and said, okay, you don't have to date other people because remember Eileen liked all of this from the get go, even with the dainty hand holding. She's like, yeah, no, 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 no. We're going to do this. We're going to take it to the video date. Okay. So, so now you are dating him. You're not dating anybody else at this point. And now you're going on dates 10, dates 11. What happens? Well, um, you know, our feelings are, you know, uh, what I liked about this 15 date rule is that your feelings really get uh, deep, even yeah. without jumping in. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I really liked that. And he liked that too. We started talking about that, uh, about how special everything was feeling because of that. And I, and I really liked that whole thing. And, and he did too. Um, and you know, he's like, Oh, I would wait a hundred dates, you know, if I oh. had to. Oh my God. Every time you say that the hair on my arm stands up with goosebumps. If you guys could see Sylvia's face, she's got this big smile. I can see her on zoom right now as we're recording. So, um, and, and now tell us about what happened before the 15th date on the 13th date, he, well, on the maybe... 11th date, this is too important to me on the 11th date, we went to mass together. So already he's going to mass with me and he said he was Catholic, but you know, there's Catholics and there's Catholics. And, and I was kind of like, does he know what to say? Does he know what to do? Does he know when to stand and kneel and all that? And he did. So I'm like, oh, okay. He, he, you know, he knows what he's doing. Um, and then by the 13th date, he said, I love you. Oh my God. Lucky 13. I love you. Right. And how did you feel? Were you expecting this? No, I mean, I was feeling it and I, I kind of, I felt that he felt it, but I didn't think he would say it. And, uh, he said it. And then of course I said it back and, um, it was a very special moment. And then on the 14th date, just to clarify, he said, I'm in love with you. Oh, and, uh, oh God, who else is melting right now? <laughs> So it was very beautiful. It was a very, very beautiful experience. Um, and I really recommend it uh, to wait the 15 dates. Um, it worked out really well. And by, you know, then came the 15th date. And I don't know if you saw Mama Mia, where she goes dot, 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 <laughs> dot, dot, dot. So you all know what happened. We did the 15 dates and then we might have spent the weekend together. Yeah. And it yeah. was very wonderful. Uh, and then things just deepened from there on. And uh, I don't know, 
you know, we've gone on three trips connected to my book already. We've got three more planned connected to my book already. He wants to go on all of them. Oh, and supportive. <clears throat> he wants you to be successful. He loves what you're doing. How amazing is that? It's very wonderful. It's very wonderful. So, so it's been great. You know, um, I, I know that I couldn't have done all this without your help. I don't think I could have. Um, not in the same way. I wouldn't have had the same mindset. I wouldn't have all the structure, but um, it worked like a charm. It worked well. Oh my gosh. And now you guys have been together for five months, huh? Yeah, it's five months. And you know, I have this thing about counting hours together. Uh, I read this study where uh, it came out of Kentucky that said, um, to become really, really good friends, you need to spend at least 200 hours together face to face like in person and I said and I said this to Rudy on the second date and he's like oh you know when he already declared himself I told him this 200 hour thing and he's like oh so I guess we've only been together for two hours I'm like <laughs> yeah 198 more to go oh and I, and now you've passed a thousand hours together yes now it's over a thousand hours yes Oh my gosh. Amazing. Sylvia, your love story, it inspires us and we do this every day, but the fact that you adhered to the rules, you did this, you took a leap. Sylvia post-divorce May, 2021. The first thing you did was get help and educate yourself. And you didn't mess around with doing this without guardrails because what happens to most people is we end up doing the same thing all over again. And that's why those divorce statistics suck, right? If 40 to 50% of first marriages end in divorce, the data show that 67% of second marriages and 74% of third marriages. So kudos to you for knowing yourself, for doing your homework, for finding the right home for you. And I'm so delighted that your home was our home at Smart Dating Academy and we're um, I just can't wait for your wedding. <laughs> you know, I'm crashing it. I'll let you know. I mean, nothing's set. We, we both have to go through annulments and all that. So um, we'll see. Oh my gosh. And how has your life, you know, your love is wonderful. You have a supportive, amazing partner who's traveling the world with you talking about your book. And, you know, I promise we would circle back a little bit because it's such a bombshell with regards to what you went through. And I know you've been through as you thought your grandfather and your life was X. And just like you said, taking 10 years and you had to go through all those stages of grief and you had already grieved. You've had so much grief. You've lost a child, which no one should. You, your marriage ended. You found out something about your family that must have been, I can't even imagine what that moment was like, where it's like everything must have just frozen for you. Yeah, it was nuts. I mean, you know, those uh, five stages of uh, loss when you lose someone, I went through um, several times already. But with, with the book, you know, it was uh, denial and depression and um, bargaining. I was at a point, you know, the bargaining one was really interesting because um, I would bargain with God saying, um, I'm going to work on this and look into my grandfather's Nazi uh, um, collaboration, if there is such a thing, but I really want to exonerate him. I'll, I'll look into the whole Nazi era in Lithuania if I can exonerate my grandfather. Deal? Is that a deal? Okay, I'm going to do that. And of course, I jump in and look, and all I find out is more and more horrible information about my grandfather until I finally had to accept it. And then... Uh, then I hit anger and the anger fueled me to finally finish the writing. And then, and then I find the book, um, came out in 21, March 21. And now oh the paperback's God. coming out with a new title, storming the land of rain this June, June 7th is coming out. Oh my gosh. And we'll put a link to Sylvia's books and Sylvia, tell us the title. The 
hardback now is the Nazi's granddaughter, how he discovered my grandfather is a war criminal. Oh my gosh. How incredibly brave, courageous you are. And you have been through hells that no human should be. And I am, like I said, just I've, all the blood in my body is swirling. I'm so happy for your happy endings. I'm happy for your love with this amazing man, Rudy. I know it, you're going to be married in a beautiful Catholic wedding in a beautiful Catholic church. I'm putting it out there. God, are you listening to me? <laughs> and and I know your book is going to be incredibly successful. So ladies and gentlemen, if Sylvia's inspired you, feel free to help us. Uh, to help a sister out, buy that book, support her, listen to her interviews. And I hope, I want to thank you, Sylvia, for telling us your story. And I want you guys to know, we're going to chant you 15 dates, 15 dates. And there is a reason for this. And when you follow a process, and if you need guardrails around you, contact somebody, get a therapist, get a coach. Sylvia went to a divorce support group at old St. Pat's church. And at the end of that, they said, you need to talk to smart dating Academy. And she's like, okay. In addition to the hundred dating books I've read, I will go and find smart dating Academy. So find the thing that you need and go do that because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So to you, my brave, bold, you know, friend, and in great love. And this next 40 to 50 years of your life is going to be filled with all of the glitter and sparkle that you deserve. Thank you so much for coming on and for inspiring me and for sharing your truths with us. We're grateful. Thanks, Bella. It's been wonderful talking to you.